Hello, I am Wonder001, and this is my review of the user interface for the Garmin Nuvi 2599 LMT HD. Currently, you are looking at it in night mode just to make filming a little easier, and the particular angle it's at, you might not be able to see, but if I tilt it forward a little bit, you'll notice that there actually is a map of the world on the back there. Uh, if you have it in day mode, the screen in the background will be white, and the world map would be much easier to see however it would be a little more difficult for filming uh, so what you're looking at here is the basic user interface it hasn't changed that much from you know the days of when garmin first started you know starting in the upper right you have a battery indicator time and then if you have a strong satellite signal or not. You also have where to and view maps. We'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, we're just gonna start down here with the settings. Now, first thing you may notice is if you've had a Garmin device in the past, you no longer hear that loud beep sound when you click on something, you hear more of a, a subtle click or tick sound, which is kind of nice and makes it, in my opinion, not quite as annoying to use. So you'll notice the three bar hamburger button there, uh, you know, kind of like what's on an Android phone. On a lot of the screens, it's gonna give you the option to restore or have slightly different functionality. I will show you each and every time because we're gonna go through every setting, every, every little button. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check on updates. And that's just gonna be the first place that you would normally go and it will show you how to update the maps on your GPS device. Next is maps and vehicles. So starting off at the top, we have vehicles, which I'm going to click on. And currently you'll notice I have selected a X-Wing. And if we drag, again, because this is a touch screen, so it's a capacitive touch screen, you can do a lot more of the swiping gestures. That's was classified as a TIE fighter, but I was informed by my wife that it is not my poor Star Wars cred going down. Um, but these are, at the last two are downloadable uh, either via the Garmin Garage or if you have your GPS plugged directly into the computer using the Garmin Express uh, application that you get. So we're going to cancel out of that and move on to driving map view. So here it shows you the orientation of your maps. You have 3D, north up, track up, each of these will change so here if i do this it changes to north up and that will just be track up and 3d kind of puts you on this 3d-ish looking uh, field of view now i did forget to mention while i was going through vehicles there used to be another option for dashboard which was the part that was across the bottom of your screen which displays speed limit uh you know arrival time altitude depending on what dashboard you have Garmin has gotten rid of that and settled on the standard dashboard, uh, mainly because they've, they've changed the way that the maps work a little bit. Uh, one of the, compl not complaints, but questions I got in the past with the 2555 was, does the GPS display the street that you're on, not just the street that's coming up or the next turn that you need to worry about when navigating? Well, Garmin has updated that user interface and it now appears at the bottom, but that also kind of gets rid of a lot of the dashboards that you could have because they wouldn't work well with that. Uh, so moving on, we're gonna go to map detail and you just have that, the amount of detail from your map that you would like. More, less, normal, um, I always tend to go with more because I want as much detail as humanly possible. So map theme, just that. You can select the color. Um, there are several different ones that you can choose from. Notice I'm using both the arrow and swiping gestures. Uh, with the night mode, it's not going to be as useful um, showing you what the different colors would look like, but just know that they're there if you want them. You may have noticed too this question up here. If you click on it, it will let you know any page that you're on, what questions you might have pertaining to it. So next up, we've got map tools. So these are going to be things that are accessible to you while you are in, in map view. So obviously I have stop, change route, up ahead. These are something that I'll cover a little bit later uh, in the maps area. 
But what this does is actually on the side of the GPS for the maps, you have three choices and it will show you gas, restaurants, or lodging and constantly update you as to how close you are to them. Uh, trip data is just that, speed, time, destination. Volume, again, volume. You wanna have access to that. And these are all buttons that are accessible in the map view. That's the only difference between this and, and some of the other things I'll be showing you later. Brightness, you want that available traffic you want available and photo live you can have selected however uh, that requires smart link and if you don't have smart link that's going to be use, uh, not useful and again the hamburger button will show you a restore option uh, so we're going to cancel out of that and go into map layers again kind of shows you a breakdown you have choices up ahead places traffic and trip log Again, this is just kind of showing you what is out there. If you have questions about a particular one, uh, let me know, because I'm trying not to delve too deep because I'm trying to make this a faster video than I have done in the past. My maps, it's gonna show you what's preloaded onto the device. Well, not just preloaded, because I have updated. You'll notice a Foursquare integration. So that's gonna be Foursquare points of interest, as well as North America. And down here, you have the related items, which is something that they kept from the previous user interface. So if you're in an area, it thinks, hey, maybe these will be two other things that you want to see next. But we're going to get out of that because we are going to go to navigation as opposed to just choosing from the bottom there. Uh, calculation mode means how do you want this to travel? Fastest time, off-road, shortest distance, and less fuel. Now, if you choose less fuel, you will, as you can see here, require to have a eco account. Now, the eco route is an app that you have to enable as well as it requires you to have a uh, external peripheral that plugs into your ODB port on your car. Uh, so not really gonna be something that you are using unless you have that particular item. Okay, so we're gonna move on to avoidances. Here you have your standard list of avoidances, U-turns, highways, ferries, carpool lanes, unpaved roads, custom avoidances. Now I did cover this a little bit in uh, the 2555 model. Uh, you can avoid a particular area or avoid a road. What that involves is you click on one or the other and it will bring up a picture of the map. I'm not going to bring up the map because I'm trying to keep you know, the map off the screen while I'm doing this at my house. Um, what you would do is you would, it's a th three, four step process. You click the corner of the map and then hit next and then click the next corner of the map and you pretty much make a box or a grid uh, for the street or area that you want to avoid and then the GPS remembers you don't want to go to those particular areas. So toll roads, uh, this is something that was moved because it used to be in avoidances. Now it has its own little uh, area which will allow you to have it always ask you about a toll road avoid altogether or allow always environmental zones exactly the same thing allow avoid always ask restricted mode that's pretty much what you're going to turn off the second you get the gps what that does is prevent you from using the gps when the car is moving so you can't touch any of the items on the screen uh, voice commands will work but uh, all the touchscreen options will not. So use it at your own discretion. Most people just take it off. Uh, GPS simulator is just that if it's in a showroom, uh, you click that and it will show you driving down the street when you're not actually going anywhere. Uh, again, here are your suggested items and the hamburger button over here is just gonna let you restore. Moving on to Bluetooth, it's just that. Here are your Bluetooth options. Uh, I, like I said, will be covering that in a separate video with the voice commands and smart link smartphone app because not everybody has those and particular to those devices that have Bluetooth. Display, you have orientation, which is either landscape or portrait. It is by default in landscape. If you switch it to portrait, it puts it into a portrait mode which is very similar to how a smartphone is laid out. So if you're used to a smartphone, perhaps you would like to use it in that mode. Now, the GPS does not have an accelerometer, meaning I cannot pick up the GPS and turn it and have it change orientation automatically. That is the only way in which you will be able to change the orientation of the GPS. 
Now, currently it is in night mode for color mode. It also has day, which watch out, has the white and kind of streakies because it's being video camera or because it's being recorded on camera. Don't worry about that. You won't see those if you do it just staring at the device itself. Auto is just that. It will change based on time of day. There is no ambient light sensor on the GPS that would cost extra money and bring the price of the GPS up. Now, to test this, I did go into a closet, a walk-in closet, close the doors uh, in the middle of the day and see if it would change when it was in auto mode. It did not. So it is based on the time of day that the GPS is picking up and will determine whether the display should be night or uh, day mode based on the time. Uh, so no, no light sensor. Brightness is just that. You have a sliding scale for brightness, or you can click. Uh, by default, I keep it at 100% because I feel at lower levels, uh, because it is a capacitive touchscreen, because it's glass, because it's a LCD screen, uh, it, it does kind of get washed out in brighter lights. And, and even with the 100%, well, the viewing angles are better than the old GPS, uh, it is still more susceptible to light saturation than, than the older models. Uh, display timeout. Now this is something that kind of annoyed me at first. By default, it is set for two minutes. Now, if you don't plug in your GPS, this is going to become a bone of contention for you. Uh, the two minutes marker, if it's not receiving power from anything and you're just hanging out, driving along and not actively navigating, in two minutes, the GPS will turn off. Now, when I say turn off, it goes into like a power saver mode. You click the button on the back and it quickly brings it back up. Now, it did this when I was just viewing the map and driving. I just wanted to, you know, in testing, wanted to see what it would look like. Two minute timeout when in map view, even if I'm not navigating, is a no-no. Uh, so I went down, I told it never do that. Even though for the most part, if you have the traffic, which this model does, it has an internal traffic receiver, you're gonna be using the power cord so that you can use that internal traffic receiver. Uh, but if you're using it on battery, just know one, it does not have a two hour battery life uh, as advertised. It's considerably less than that hour. 45 minutes, but that's probably because I have the brightness turned up. And two, that timeout, if you don't change it, will will get annoying very quickly. Okay, screenshot. What this will allow you to do is if you check that, the little help button goes away, and you get this screenshot icon or camera icon. You click on it and it will allow you to take screenshots of the screen that you are currently looking at. That's what that sounds like. So it will throw a picture that we can look at later, but I'm just gonna take that off for the time being. So it's good if you wanna do a tutorial like this, but need screenshots and don't wanna be talking in front of a camera as I am currently. All right. So traffic. Uh, these options will only be available if you have plugged in a compatible traffic receiver or in the case of this model, uh, if you have correct power to the device. Uh, I currently, because I ran out of power before, have it just hooked up via a USB cable to a wall wart that's plugged in. Now, that is not compatible with these traffic options, which is why I can't do anything uh, with the traffic options that are being shown. Say, so, connect to power cable is not uh, compatible with traffic. So we go more and it's blah, 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 blah. I will show you what this looks like with a compatible power device now. Shows you if you're using a compatible traffic receiver. In this case, the receiver is built into the GPS, so all you need is the power line. So you can check that on or off. Current provider, click on that and it will show you which one you're using. Uh, in this case, I'm using the Auto Here Traffic US Canada Digital HD Traffic. The other choice is this guy here, which is a paid digital traffic. So we're using the free one that comes with the GPS. And the hamburger button there will just bring up search providers. And it's going to go back to searching since I was in there mucking about subscriptions. We'll again show you the two subscriptions that you have. Uh, in this case, I have the Lifetime Tra Traffic and Maps for US and Canada, HD version, as well as the 
lifetime track it, traffic and maps non HD version. You can come up there and add another one if you wanted to, but obviously you would have to pay for it. Optimize route is next, which will allow you to manually change the route if it detects traffic, or you can automatically have it switch routes if it detects traffic, which I think I'm actually going to do from now on. Traffic alerts is next. So here it will nag you at every little uh, instance of traffic, which I prefer. Uh, just severe accidents with the basic traffic and then no traffic alerts. But if you have lifetime traffic, why would you not want to get alerts? And the last bit is traffic trends. So what that does is uh, it keeps track of your daily habits. So your 9 to 5 or your normal patterns of use. And then based on other people who are nicer than you and let Garmin track them and use their data, uh, what that will do with Traffic Trends is allow Garmin to help the navigation predict better routes based on your daily travels. Now you can see in the upper left hand corner here, this is the traffic receiver signal strength. And that will change based on how close you are to a good signal strength. So unit times is just that. Current time, you can select it to be automatic. You can set it yourself. Uh, just let it do it automatic. Save yourself some time. Uh, time format, you have 24 hour, 12 hour, and UTC. Choice is yours. I prefer 12 hours. Uh, my military buddies, 24 is what they're used to. Units, you have miles or kilometers. Going to come up here and position formatting. You have coordinate format, which will allow you to select how the coordinates will function. Now, this is kind of a more advanced option, which I do not believe that most people will uh, be playing with. However, this is your default. Likewise, this is a, a more advanced feature, but here is your WGS 84 is your default setting for that. So if you don't know what that is or don't want to play with that, uh, don't play with it. You, you could, could run into some issues. Go back from positioning formats uh, to languages and keyboards. Here we have voice language. Now, this is the new, it used to be American Jill, which would say turn right at, you know, Main Street. Well, now they've replaced American Jill with American English Samantha, and she's the one who gives real directions. So she's the one who will say turn left at the stoplight or turn right at McDonald's. There are other voices, there are plenty of voices depending on your language. Uh, I did kind of wish that they gave you the option to sample the language without going to the map and trying to give it a direction. If I change it, you'll notice that it doesn't give you a little test of what the voice sounds like. So that's, that's one thing I wish they would change so that you could kind of get a sampling of what the voice was. Uh, text language. Currently it's in American English. Again, there are plenty of choices to choose from. Keyboard layout, American English QWERTY, uh, British English QWERTY. So if, if you use a keyboard at all, uh, QWERTY is the standard. And then you just kind of keep coming down. Everybody pretty much is on the QWERTY keyboard. Uh, the old UI used to have an option for ABCD, which was just horrible. So they got rid of it and everything's on QWERTY. So again, here are your related items and that button just does a restore. So we've gotten to device info and that is just it. It is about the device, the EULA of the device, position reporting. I have turned off. What that does is that will send information about your usages, uh, speed, location. Uh, it, it's supposed to make the Garmin services better, but I don't want to share. Uh, travel history is a neat option, which I will show you because we're going to see that in a minute. Uh, and then clear travel history would clear this. What it does is keep track of where you go and it will give you like a little map of where you've been. It's kind of interesting. Um, but if you're worried about it taking up too much space on your GPS, tick that off and clear the history because these two options are on by default. Now in the about, this is where you would also be able to see if you have an internal traffic receiver as opposed to an external traffic receiver that requires the 
traffic receiving cable from Garmin. Uh, again, this is the 2599 LMT HD model, which does not require a traffic receiver to be external because it has an internal one. So back to the home screen. That was the settings. If we go to volume, it's just that. It is a scrolling volume or touch. You also have up here options, automatic volume, button sound. So that's that clicking sound. If I take it off, you don't hear it anymore. Now, audio mixer, as you may have saw when I went in there, allows you to have different volumes for your navigation, which is your turn by turn directions and your phone, because this is a Bluetooth device. So, you know, it is going to have Bluetooth options, which allow you to use your phone to dial. So it's nice that you can kind of set different volumes. So you can be talking to somebody on the phone, but your GPS can still be louder than the person on the phone. So you know to make that next left and not miss your exit. You also have the option to mute everything from this screen. Moving on, we have apps. So this is extra features that the GPS can do. Now, these up here, My Garmin, Photo Live, and Dynamic Parking, all have this little icon next to it, which is this one right here, Smartphone Link. If you don't have a smartphone or you don't download the app, those are perf you know, pretty much useless. You're not gonna be able to do anything with them. Again, I'll break that out into a separate video because I did download. It is a free app on the Google Play and Apple uh, Store. So starting with things that you might actually be able to use, you've got Foursquare. This is a new integrated points of interest uh, option that you have via Foursquare. If you have the smart link, you can check in at these locations. You can change where it searches if you're not in the location and you just kind of want to go ahead and see what's going on by clicking up here and then tell it, you know, where I'm at, a different city, recent destination. I can say Gettysburg because that's where I was. And now it's going to show me points of interest that are close to Gettysburg. Help is just that. It's going to give you a little onboard help. Smart link whole other video, backup camera. So for the most part, you probably aren't gonna play with that. Phone, uh, I'll roll that in with Bluetooth because there, there are options that you cannot access unless your phone is paired via Bluetooth. Eco route, as I discussed before, you need that extra peripheral that plugs into your ODB port on your car. I don't have one, sorry, so can't really get into that one too much. Uh, voice commands, again, going to- Say going to break that out into its own little video because it, it is complex and has its own dynamic. Trip planner, just that, will allow you to plan a trip with several points of interest. And that's what each of those little push pins are. So you can kind of plan your own route. Traffic, again, need to show you via a, a connection that's properly plugged in. Currently it's not. Where I've been is interesting. If you, once you click into it, it'll bring up your map of where you currently are and have on the side a date selection. As you can see here, this is a date selection. Uh, it, it was keeping tabs on where I was because I had that option checked off. Uh, so you can see where on these particular days I was driving around in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It's, it's an interesting feature, not necessary, but it, it's kind of nice to go back and visit some of those, op uh, some of the places that you've been. Last parking spot, last spot. So that's gonna be where you stop moving. It's going to put a little ping in the uh, memory so that it knows where you park last. Now I'm not going to show you this because currently I'm parked last at my house, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but it would allow you to get back to your car. It will show you, it will show you a little map, a little push pin on it, as well as give you the coordinates of where your car is, as well as the distance it would take to get to your car. Now over here we have a stop function that only is initiated if you are in. Uh, travel mode, which you click on the map and it shows you the map and directions, but we're not going to do that right now. And where to is just that. It is a new selection that you can go through, uh, go home, you can type in an address, restaurants, gas stations, 
four squares. You can add shortcuts. You have categories, restaurant shopping every day. So we'll go everyday life, uh, auto services, and then you can select where you want to go. Auto clubs. And we'll go Westchester. But that we'll get more into in more depth in the navigation portion of the video. So here, the hamburger button changes from a reset to set home location, as well as remove shortcuts. And that is it for the user interface. Uh, most of the other options are either Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth voice command or smart link related, which I'll make into a different video and navigation wise. So that will be a separate video as well. So this has been a long video as it is. So if you're interested in those options, check the playlist wherever I happen to put it up in the video uh, and you can check those options out. If you have questions or comments, just let me know and I'll get back to you with you know, the best of my ability and knowledge. I've been Water 001. Thanks for watching.